Well, the momentum trade is about to get a major makeover as we've been talking about these momentum names. The iShares Momentum ETF, ticker is MTUM, is expected to rebalance within the coming days. And our next guest says the $16 billion ETF shakeup will put a new focus on value over tech. So here's an interesting one. Let's bring in Chris Harvey. He's head of equity strategy at Wells Fargo Securities. Chris, we appreciate you being here. So tell us about what you anticipate happening with right. this shakeup and what that means, why it should matter to us. Well, uh, maybe we'll go back to what some of the guests were saying. They're saying, hey, the reaction on tech was great. The earnings out of tech, it was great, but the stocks didn't do anything. And one of the reasons why the stocks may not be doing anything is they're no longer the momentum trade. They're no longer the quote unquote, the chart looks good. And we're seeing quants move away from the space. We're seeing uh, momentum players move away from the space. And this rebalance, you're going to have tech go down from 40% of the index to about 17. And let's not forget the Russell is going to rebalance in another month. Tech may come down. Placing it, you're seeing more cyclicals and value type stocks. Financials were south of 2% in the index they're going to go to north of 30%. So now what momentum is, or what I should say is financials are the new Mo trade. Do you, do you feel like, Chris, that is the right sector to be focusing on as the new momentum trade as we're still in this very low interest rate environment? <laughs> well, what I think is if you're a momentum player, what you do is you pile into what works and you move away from what's working. So to answer the question technically, should people be moving into should momentum is yes. If we look at the fundamentals of financials, the fundamentals of financials are actually quite good. There were many macro headwinds in financials, and we can argue about where rates are going to go, but the curve is steepening, credit is tight, the consumer has a ton of money, they're ready, willing to able, able to spend, and M&A activity is beginning to tick up. And oh, by the way, even though financials have outperformed, relative valuation is still attractive because numbers continue to go higher. Chris Harvey, thank you very much for being here and for explaining this rotation to come. Chris Harvey of Wells Fargo. All right, team, what do you think? Uh, Tim, I'm going to start with you. What do you make of this uh, financials yep. being the big overweight in this momentum index? That's an interesting way to think about it. Well, it, it's, it's fascinating. I mean, financials have been death. They've been grim death. They, you know, since the financial crisis, it, it took until really uh, the middle part, uh, actually towards November of last year, for us to get uh, into breakout into fresh highs. If you're measuring across the board, obviously a handful uh, when you consider the dilutive effects of the crisis, like Citibank, still well, well below. But um, Chris pointed out the definition for this index really is is about where there is momentum and where technically it's not about value or growth. It's about where there's momentum. Um, financials to the extent that uh, look, Fed dynamics are, are, if anything, they're going to be coming into play and maybe flattening out the yield curve. But uh, the reasons for the Fed at play is it not only a better economy, but obviously a steeper yield curve. Uh, the fact that the consumer credit issues are still very far away from people's minds, um, the provisions and some of the fundamentals behind why the big money set our banks, I think still have a lot of ammunition to surprise to the upside over the next couple quarters. Again, because they provisioned so hard in the early part of COVID, while sales and trading uh, and investment banking and mortgage origination and all their core uh, kind of pillars of, of growth are uh, arguably not done as well ever in unison um, as they are doing right now. So the fundamentals to me make a lot of sense. It's tough to talk about banks in a momentum index, um, but here we are. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought, too. Uh, Karen, what do you think about them taking down consumer discretionary from 19 percent of the index to just over 10 percent and then healthcare also losing about 8 percent of its uh, percentage weighting in this momentum trade? I was actually surprised to see that healthcare weighting because, um, I mean, you know, I look at Big Cow Pharma a lot and that uh, hardly feels like it's, you know, knocked the cover off the ball where some of these things are trading. It's had a nice run in the last month or so, but that was sort of surprising me. I don't know if that's more in the biotech space or some of the, you know, like a Moderna, something like that, that have just gone nuts. So that one was sort of interesting. But I got to just say one thing that Tim said, the Please. idea of financials really being the, you know, <laughs> that's where the momentum is. I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like uh, I, I, I mean, I've, I've liked financials for a while. Didn't work. Did work. Now it feels like it's kind of later to the party. 
I don't know. Maybe you can answer this question for me. What <laughs> constitutes momentum? I really don't know. I'm not sure. Is it a volume thing, a price move thing, or how much it moves over time? Yeah, Dan. I don't know, but I feel like some of that's already happened. Yeah, I was actually going to ask Chris if, if we had time to sneak in one more, if they were like a little late to the party with some of this and what momentum means, if we need to change the name of the ETF. Bring us home, Dan. What do you think? <laughs> okay. I mean, at the end of the day, we're talking about a $14 billion ETF, um, you know, that, that is bit, probably built on some very quantitative models, and they're making purely qualitative um, adjustments based on the lack of momentum, the lack of upward momentum, you know what I mean, in some of the names. So they're taking tech down big. You know, that consumer discretionary, here's another one. Okay. You know what 40% of the consumer discretionary ETF is? It's Amazon and Tesla. Tesla's down 14% of the year and Amazon's unchanged. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, I, I think it's probably backward looking um, and I'd probably stick with the underperformers um, and rotate out of the, uh, the, the overperformers that they're putting into the thing. That's a good point and a good point on the consumer discretionary names with Amazon and Tesla making up such a big part of that. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.